What's up YouTube? Got another video on the A6 today. I'm gonna be talking about heat exchangers. And the one that I installed. So for starters, if you guys own one of these cars or an S4, S5 platform, you guys know the heat exchangers from factory just don't perform up to what this car needs. But the factory one, after maybe two, three passes, the motor was pretty badly heat soaked and you could actually like feel the power loss. So unfortunately I didn't film any of this for YouTube, but I did take a pretty good video for TikTok about installing the heat exchanger. Uh, in this video, I just wanna go over like in depth of how it works. In the TikTok, I kind of just showed how to do it and you get some better uh, visuals from that. So my TikTok is DMC Builds for anyone who wants to check that out. It's one of my pinned videos, so it should be pretty easy to find. So I'm gonna put a picture up on the screen right now, and that's gonna be your factory cooling system. So you can see in this schematic here, it's your entire cooling system. So we're gonna start from the pump, and I'll point that out on the screen. So from the pump, the coolant comes out of the pump through this orange line into this mini heat exchanger, which is mounted on the driver's side near like the corner of the bumper by like the fog light goes through that, exits, goes into a pretty lengthy coolant line, and eventually makes its way to the bottom of the supercharger, runs through the cooling bricks in the supercharger, and comes out hot on the top side, which then drops down the front of the motor, goes all the way to the passenger side, loops around the rad support and everything, goes into the main heat exchanger, which then feeds back into the pump. So. It's a very long system, so it takes that cool, that hot coolant a long time to get to the heat exchanger. It doesn't spend a lot of time in there, and then it's right back out into lines, which is not gonna keep it cool. So I'll show you guys on my car in a second, but just so you can get an idea, I deleted both the heat exchangers and replaced the rectangular one with a larger heat exchanger. I spun the coolant pump around 180 degrees to point towards the passenger side of the car on the outlet and I deleted the coolant line that is outlined in red that one is completely gone and I'll show you guys what I replaced it with so the way I have this run is starting from the pump which I've turned 180 in the clamp so that now the spout is facing this way it runs through the factory hose which I cut back a bit and enters the metal line which then 90s up and runs up to here. Now you can't really see it, but you can see I have a little bit of that reflective heat tape around the line just to keep some of the motor's heat out of it. That's the cold side. So I wanna try and keep that as cold as possible. And then you can see this line enters the bottom of the supercharger. So once it goes through the bottom of the supercharger, it comes out through the top and now it's hot entering this line which then wraps around and comes to my heat exchanger instead of the factory setup where it went down the front of the motor all the way along the bottom, looped around and entered the factory heat exchanger somewhere in this area behind the bumper. What I did was I bought a Mishimoto heat exchanger that has two outlets on the same side and I then ran this coolant hose around right to there. So it's a very, very short. So that hot water that's getting heated up by the supercharger only has to go from here to the heat exchanger and it gets cold. Now, did have to put a hole to the rad support, which is not a big deal because this is a plastic and metal rad support. The main frame of it is metal, but it's surrounded by a bunch of plastic and plastic tabs and all that. And in this specific spot, there was a outline of a hole and I drilled through it and it was all just plastic and I just kept removing these edges until I was starting to see metal. And then I put some silicone around it just so the metal didn't rust, but I didn't remove any metal. I just removed plastic until I started to see metal. So all this was was just plastic. It was nothing structural, but with that hole through it, I was able to sneak this coolant hose through here and have this super short loop. So what I'm running is a Mishimoto heat exchanger. It's a dual pass. It's the same size as any other heat exchanger you could buy for these that's like meant for this car. This is like a universal heat exchanger. Once it drops through the heat exchanger, you can kind of see that line back there, comes around, enters the pump cold, and the pump pumps it right back up to the supercharger. So 
it's a very very short loop so that coolant is only hot from you know here to the heat exchanger the rest of it should be pretty cold especially since we got heat tape around that line did put some heat tape on the hot line on this side just because it got really close to the radiator and condenser and i didn't i wanted to keep as much heat away from that line as possible so that's the system i have and it is very functional it only cost me about 380 to make all of this all together that's including the heat exchanger the hoses the little brass couplers that are in between these coolant lines the only thing i had to make was these brackets that hold it on they're just welded right to the bumper bar but i mean this thing is it's solid it's on there it's good to go so that's the only part you have to really worry about is making a bracket but other than that for 380 it is the most efficient heat exchanger you're going to be able to get for that price you're going to be spending 450 to 500 on any like regular heat exchanger and it's going to be reusing the factory system which is not efficient so the only downsides to this setup which has nothing to do with the setup itself it's just the way the car was made from the factory is is that when you're not hitting the gas or you're at idle or you're parked your coolant pump doesn't run at 100 percent as soon as you touch the gas and you start putting your foot down on it even if it's just a little bit it'll kick that coolant pump to run 100 percent and i noticed that when i do that these intake temps just plummet as soon as the pump starts running at 100 percent so what I've seen a lot of guys online say is that the middle wire in the pump, if you unpin it, it's a signal wire. So if it's unpinned, your pump's not going to know what percentage to run at. So it just defaults to emergency mode, which then just runs it at 100% all the time. You do get a soft code, which means you'll have a code for it when you scan the car, but no check engine light will come up. But I didn't really want to do that given that this is a daily driven car. I don't want to have any issues with it. So I left the wire alone. What I am going to do is run that wire to a switch. So that way with the switch inside the car, I'll have be able to control whether this pump runs at 100% or if it runs just normally. And along with that switch, I'm also gonna add in, uh, Mishimoto makes a 12 inch auxiliary fan, which I'm gonna put on the back side of this. So between those two things with getting some extra air through that heat exchanger and running the pump at 100%, I think I'll be able to get my intake temps even farther down and especially when I'm about to like make a pass or do a pull or something, I can get this thing cooled down before I go to hit the gas. So another possibility for this setup is also replacing the factory CWA 50 pump with the 100, but that kind of takes away the cheap aspect because I've seen those pumps selling anywhere from 250 to 600. So that's going to bring your price point up a lot. And so I feel pretty comfortable saying that this is the cheapest most factory based setup i mean i've seen some guys who replace their you know cooling bricks and they're running just three quarter hose right off of this all like separate hoses and all crazy shit and uh dual heat exchangers for bottom and top but this is the simplest cheapest option and it performs perfect i mean there's i have no complaints about it so i'll take some clips of you know i'll let it sit here and idle for a while so the intake temps are really high and i'll show you guys how fast it shoots down once that pump kicks in at 100 percent and i'll have another video coming out with how i wired the pump with that switch and how i wire the fan in so if you guys want a more in-depth video of how i did this and kind of see it without the bumper off and all that go to my tiktok at dmc builds it's the it's a, the first pinned video be easy to find everybody i'll have another video for you guys soon on that fan and the switch that'll be all for today